these are the things that we need and it's something that needs to be consistent and something that needs to be constant so we can make some true change man any way we can oh man right right as you say that man we got some people trying to initiate some change right now hazmat donating five dollars and 55 cents thank you we got it uh, looks like tom mippin donated five dollars much love from canada and we got we got lots of love big spill donating 20 first three to match me gets this up yeah. reptile dysfunction epic donated 20 dollars shark the prez donated five dollars black lives matter baby fat amy donated 20 dollars and i think i skipped over Wesialdo donated five dollars thank you to all of you who are helping donate so we can go ahead and support some great causes but before we hop into some of the top eight action i have a, a nice little piece here that was written by a black smasher from the Bahamas, his name is Ronan. Uh, got a little busy, didn't have enough time to read it tonight. So I'm gonna hop in the chair in his stead and hopefully I do this speech justice. Now granted, uh, my eyes kind of lose focus when I start uh, reading and talking at the same time, but we're gonna try to finesse, okay? So, very important message for everybody watching at home. Anyone who is confused about what the Black Lives Matter movement is, what it means to me as someone who is black, what it means to others who get to observe their black brothers and sisters fall without quite understanding what is going on. This was for you guys to understand and get a glimpse, just a little peek into our window of what we go through. So here we go. In America, when a person is arrested, they are forced to choose between either being imprisoned or paying cash bail before they are even tried. What this means is that even if there is no case against someone, they are forced to pay hefty fines for their freedom or be held until their court date. Black people are often forced to pay higher bails for the same offenses. When coupled with the vastly unequal rates of arrest of black people, the poor and other vulnerable communities Many people are either lost in the system for long periods of time or are forced to use all their resources to secure their freedom. This is especially important regarding the recent protests where people are being arrested arbitrarily for making their voices heard. Despite not having the resources to navigate this system, many poor and people who are minorities are still joining the protests to fight for their brothers and sisters. We want to give these brave individuals as much support as we can as they speak out against a corrupt system that disproportionately, disproportionately targets the poor and people of color. And we will be making it a point to distribute half of our contributions across various bail funds trying to combat the criminalization of poverty. Now one of those, the Minnesota Healing Justice Network. The Minnesota Healing Justice Network is a mutual aid network of professional healers and wellness practitioners dedicated to providing support for large movements and organizations doing work in the various communities. In times of large scale social upheaval, it's often easy to neglect mental and emotional toll placed on the community in favor of producing results. But it's important to recognize that we are all human and have our limits. Between the pandemic and overwhelming amount of police brutality at protests, healthcare professionals are being stretched thin and need all the support that they can get. We will be donating a quarter of the proceeds toward this community-centered network to help ease their burden, while also recognizing that there is more work to do than simply providing funds. To learn more, please visit their website below and learn more ways to support long-term anti-racist efforts. Now we're about to get into the real meat and potatoes. So if, you, if you're with it right now, stay with it. This is where it really gets hit. For hundreds of years, black people have been treated as subhuman within American society. They were seen no different from cattle, made to work until their usefulness expires and then often violently cast away. Due to intentional historical and political miseducation, many people believe that this issue is a thing of the distant past and that it has nothing to do with them. This misbelief cannot be further from the truth. And society's willingness to sweep these problems under the rug has created a deep rift in the types of issues faced by marginalized communities. The abolition of slavery legally began in 1863. Yet in many places, enslaved people were purposefully kept ignorant of their freedom until Juneteenth, the day of the Emancipation of Proclamation, was delivered to Texas two and a half years later. Recognize this upcoming Friday, June 19th, Jim Crow laws designed to segregate black people were finally repealed in the late 1960s. 
these legal manifestations of racism being repeated do not automatically result in a change of society's beliefs. Instead, it forced racism to further adapt and evolve, allowing this mindset to be passed down from one generation to the next. Not much time has passed since then. MLK was assassinated in 1968, and many of today's grandparents were alive during that time. Whites-only restaurants and counters have turned into discriminatory dress codes. Sharecropping and housing segregation laws have turned into discrimi discriminatory lending practices as slave patrols turned into police departments. KKK robes have turned into badges and guns. This system has been very carefully designed to maintain the status quo and to keep a very specific group of people in power using varying methods of oppression on others. While all people of color and minority groups face some sort of oppression, the brunt of this exhaustingly, or rather the brunt of this weight falls on black people. They are arrested disproportionately to their rates of crime and are forced to participate in a legal system that outcasts them from society while simultaneously profiting from their misfortunes. There is an exhaustingly long list of black people who don't even survive the first hour of contact with law enforcement. The recent increase in social awareness on this issue in particular is certainly welcome, but for many, the cost is far too high. Black people are not factory-made martyrs for your political engagement. And it is time to stand against the brutalities that they face, that we face, that I face. We are raising our voices today because we believe interactions between a black person and a police officer should not result in death. What is important moving forward is that we expand this fight past holding bad cops in quotation marks. And I'm going to say that out loud. Bad cops in quotation marks. I be hearing that shit all the time. And let me tell you, bro, it's much, much more than that. We as a society need to recognize the way that these interconnected systems oppress people and actively seek to dismantle them and replace them with equitable community-oriented solutions. Today, we can change law enforcement. Tomorrow, we can change the school to prison pipeline. The day after that, we can change voter suppression. We need to realize that all these systems are interconnected, benefiting a few people at the top of the expense of poor people, black people, the, LB, or the LGBTQ community, the disabled, and more. When we realize this, we can truly start working towards freedom. It's time for us to accept that we need to educate ourselves and actively work together towards removing the roots of these issues. As members of the large and diverse Smash Ultimate community and the Smash community in general, man, we have a responsibility to band together in solidarity with the communities whose manners, whose members we have adopted. Many use this game as an escape from reality of how terrible society has become, but this is a luxury your friends and rivals do not have. Black Smash players are still black when the switch is turned off. Do not turn a blind eye to their struggles, to my struggles, to our struggles. Each individual has internal work to do on their journey to social change. Whether it's educating yourself, confronting racism within your family, or joining a community-based organization who is dedicating themselves to uplifting the most vulnerable members of society, there is no shortage of ways in which you can help. It will not be pretty, it will not be easy, but healing means confronting the parts of yourself and working towards being a better person. Every little bit counts. Remember, abolishing slavery was a radical notion for hundreds of years. Also, don't forget, all black lives matter. And I gotta repeat that, all black lives matter. That doesn't mean just black men. That doesn't mean just black women, that means Queer Black Lives Matter, transgender Black Lives Matter. There is no picking and choosing under the umbrella of black. If you are black, your life matters. And we're here today to make sure that that message is understood and that is heard. Thank you. Yeah, man, amen to that, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and again, like we said before, we appreciate everyone who's out here right now who took time to listen to that really sit down and ask themselves, you know, if their intentions are for this, for proper human rights, that they care about the, our people, they care about all black lives and they truly matter to them, 
Ask yourself if your intentions match those actions. And if they don't, please take a good look at yourself and hold yourself accountable for that. I mean, as we were saying through this speech, there's so many people who deal with these injustices and these struggles day in and day out. And it's something that has been built into this system. You know, you have redlining that has caused these spaces and the property tax to be reduced. And because of that, you have places where traditionally minorities lived. They're not getting the, the same funding because they're not getting the same funding. They're not able to get the proper education. You know, you have that, you have that because of how we have the 13th Amendment and how everything's set up. When you are able to go ahead and unjustly take in Black people and take in all these minorities and people who are in the struggle, and you can go ahead and incarcerate them, and you can take away all their rights just by that, that you are legally making someone a slave just like that, we need to understand there needs to be a change there. And the system itself needs to change. And no longer can we stand idly by. This is not conjecture. This is not just opinions. There's facts, right? And so I encourage everyone to edu educate themselves and learn about these circumstances. This is happening time and time again. Even if we lived in a world where Civil Rights Act in 1968 actually got rid of all these circumstances, my mother was born for, before that time. There's no way in the world that you're able going to be able to grow the wealth. You're going to get the, what you need to succeed and build to succeed. And that's what we're fighting for because even to this day, we have all these problems and they still have not been taken away. So once again, appreciate everyone being here. Appreciate everyone sharing and supporting and building out and understanding that this is a serious issue. And just continuing to educate yourself in that regard because if you're going to sit and fight and you know, be mad about this stuff, that having these kind of conversations... I wish I could just have this conversation about it and feel uncomfortable. I wish that's what would happen. I wish that I haven't been at gunpoint multiple times and I potentially could not be here today talking to you guys right now and doing commentary for that. I wish that's all I had to deal with, being a little bit uncomfortable and having that inconvenience. But alas, I don't have that option because I was born black in a society that has systemically oppressed us. So Facts. once again, thank you. Let's go, bam. Bam. Let me ask you this, right? Because it ain't no surprise if y'all watching this stream, I'm black, bam's black. Just in case you didn't know, I'm putting that out on the table. We're both black. I am from Haiti. And bam, where are you from? I'm Jamaican least, what and is Nigerian. Your yeah. Jamaican and Nigerian, baby. Jamaican and Nigerian. There you go. All, all, all kinds of black people exist in America. And my thing is, so, right, you, I've imagined... Have you ever had a dangerous encounter with police or a moment in your life where you sat down and you went, whoa, hold up. I don't know if I really mess with the police like that anymore. Oh, absolutely. I have multiple times. So where I grew up is in Orange County. Uh, Orange County is uh, particularly conservative when it comes to the general of California. And I've had uh, I've been at gunpoint multiple times in front of my house because the cops believe that I don't live there. They thought there's no way that I could live there, and I've been literally at gunpoint. And then when they actually talked to me and r realized that I was someone in their eyes that was educated and affluent, and they recognized that they can't go ahead and just kind of pull one over on me, I asked them, what what was wrong? What did I do? Oh, well, you know, um, it seemed like you were kind of going through, like, you know, when you were taking a right, like, you know, maybe you're going fast. I'm like, I'm under the speed limit. Uh, well, you know, we just had to make sure we got to make sure people are safe. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so, I mean, I see like people like there is, and like I said, these are, this is not just one instance. It's like a multiple times I've been at gunpoint for things to make sure I am safe, right? That uh, I, I've, I've had a cop straight up tell me that he knows everyone who lives in this neighborhood. And therefore I do, I, there's no way that I like stay here or there's oh, no way God. that I have anything to deal with here. He knows everyone in the neighborhood, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Apparently so it, not. Yeah. And and the thing is, too, I'm not going to. Uh, so, like, the thing is, there is a difference as well where me, the reason where, I, where I'm at right now is I appreciate it because my parents were able to grow up in Jamaica. They're able, And then um, my mother, she was able to do her schooling in Europe. In Europe, they still have issues, too. They still have racial biases and stuff they're going through. But systemically, it's exponentially better than it is here. So, my parents were able to get to a place where they were able to go through nursing school and like do the things that they needed to do and come here and have a successful life for us. 
right? But there's a lot of people, a lot of Black Americans that are here that are not even able to do that. And like I said, you know, I, I see some people in the, like some people in the chat, like, oh, well, you're not impressed. Like you haven't gone to these things. I, like I said, I encourage you to learn about redlining. I encourage you to learn about mass incarceration. Netflix, they actually allowed, um, they have it on the YouTube channel. So you can literally just watch the 13th, right? Um, you can you can go through and we have data to these things and support these things, right? And if you don't know these things and you are so quick to combat these things and you don't even understand what's going on and that we have facts, you need to look at yourself. You need to take a hard look at yourself mm -hmm. when you don't even have data and you're just spamming, right? Like it's just nonsense. Like to use a like smash analogy, like if you, if someone is standing there and they have frame data in front of them, and they're like, oh, well, this move is two frames. We have this. It's from the game. It's two frames. No, it's not. How do you know? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know. But, you know, no, no it's not. That. That's stupid. That would be dumb, right? I'm sure anyone, even if you don't, you feel like you don't agree with this, like, movement, you should at least understand that, right? So if you understand that, then you should understand that educate yourself first before you speak on these things and recognize why this matters. Uh, absolutely, this is, we're here for Smash, but it's because we're fighting for a cause, which is why we're talking about the cause. So, you know, that these things need to be talked about. This is why we're doing this, you know. Uh, it, of course, guys, if you're coming into the stream and you thought you were just only going to get Smash and you're shocked that a charity stream for people's rights, people are discussing that. I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm know. Hip, I'm hip. Sorry. <laughs> Surprise! Charity stream talks about charity craziness. I know it's insane, but that's the world we live in, right? So, sit with us, please. Just give at, at the very least, listen, and see what we go from there. All right. Again, once again, we appreciate you guys being in here. Um, even some of the people who are going to talk about this stuff and say, "Ah, oh, well, this didn't happen," whatever. I'm happy you're in here too because you know what. Maybe one day some of this stuff will collect and it will hit your heart. Maybe. I'm hip, bro. I'm hip. And especially for these people, right? A lot of times the, the, the names just feels like names to them. You know what I mean? Because for a lot of people, it's so much about like, oh, it's just somebody else, but they're not in my specific discourse community. So suddenly they don't really care about it, right? Like it's like, oh, you say George Floyd, Floyd, they're like, all right, whatever. You know, that's just another person. Oscar Grant, that's another person. Natasha McKenna, another person. Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor. Like the, the list of names goes on. And it's like, it's annoying. It's annoying yeah. that I have to like point out the fact that this list is so long because I just have like lines and lines and lines and lines of brothers and sisters that have just been murdered for seemingly no reason for negligence due to racism due to because they felt like it that day. We've had black people get shot and then be like, hey, bro, why'd you shoot me? And we've had cops say, I don't know. You're going to shoot someone and say, I don't know. For real? But that's the life we live, and that's our day-to-day, -day, and people don't seem to understand that. Smash, as we were saying earlier in Ronan's beautiful speech, we don't get to take the skin off, right? And that's not even to say we want to take the skin off. I'm black, and I am very proud of that. But it also means an acknowledgement of the fact that the way the status quo is for people of the same nature is very, very different than it is for others. And especially even among the umbrella of being black, it still varies in wildly different ways. There's colorism within the black community, depending on how dark you are in the community leads to a completely different experience.